Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of 2023. I am so glad that you took a couple of minutes. You know, the number one damaging cause of all residential homes is usually water damage in one form or another. It can either come from interior plumbing problems, it can come from flooding, it can come from uh, rain events that tend to uh, threaten the landscape and flood foundations. You know, today we're talking about drainage systems, how are they are installed and how they protect your home in so many ways. You know, managing landscape water, runoff water, and those cloudburst events can go a long way in making sure your home never suffers costly water damage. Again, welcome to 2023. I am glad you joined me. It is going to be a great year and I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Hey, I'm Matt, you can call me coach. Every Friday I bring with me landscape DIY education, concepts and theories, ideas and solutions so you guys can go out and tackle a landscape project yourself, get professional results, save a whole lot of money in the process and in this day and age be a lot more self-reliant. Man, after a 20 plus year career in the green industry, I'm bringing with me a lot of knowledge and experience that I wanna share with you guys the new, modern, educated, self-reliant homeowner of today. You know, I think most of the construction industry across the globe will probably agree with me that water is the number one damaging element to a residential home. Much of that water originates outside, either from one form of water or another, rain, snow melt, ice dams, etc., and roofs that are compromised, but mainly and many times from accumulating water at or near the foundation, which finds its way and gets wicked up into rotting mud sills, uh, basement flooding, splash zones caused by poor grading, no gutter systems, etc. The results end up with things that we just don't want around our home, dry rot funguses, molds, even, even bad molds like black mold, dry rot, stucco failing, uh, wicking of water to other areas of the foundation, and settling and shifting of foundations themselves. You know, in my book and course, I go over a few of the jobs that I had when I performed these tasks and that I had performed in my own homes, including my first home where drainage was a very necessary landscape task, and I had to learn by baptism by fire or suffer foundation problems. So let's look at the solution, at least for the exterior water threat that uh, comes to bear in our yards and landscapes. This is not the podcast for you if you have interior plumbing problems that are causing water damage. That's just a... You know, that's just an epic fail on the inside of the home, not the outside. Had that as well at a rental property I once owned. Oh boy, was that fun. Jackhammering up foundation floors, finding pipes underneath, and repairing them. Why they burst, I have no idea. It was an older home and it had galvanized pipes and they basically kind of rusted out at a T. Yeah, I don't want to have to go through that again. But landscape drainage begins with these two words, grade and slope. This mainly applies to brand new yards that are having landscapes installed. For you with existing yards and poor drainage, you need a landscape surgical makeover to correct the problem because you probably have cement walkways and plant material and, and maybe irrigation systems to contend with and things have settled over the years or decades, and now you got water that wants to sit at the foundation rather than flow away. Slope and grade should be approached with a, uh, what I'd like to use, a 1% rule. At the minimum, 1% slope away from the home, away from the foundation of whatever kind you have. All terrain should slope away from the dwelling. At a 1% pitch, 2% if you can achieve it. As the very least, if you did nothing else, nothing else, this would allow water from the heavens coming off the roof and falling on the yard near the house would be evacuated away to a certain extent away from the foundation and end up elsewhere where it wouldn't threaten the home. But where? 
evacuate it where? From slope and grade, we think rooftop water management, and that brings to mind gutters. Gutters correctly installed and just as importantly maintained are really a frontline defense from water intrusion. Gathering water at the roof line and directing water off the roof and into a well thought out ground drainage system takes away 85% or more of the threat and of course the worry of accumulating water around your home. Gutter screens and regular maintenance will keep the system performing well for years and decades. Neglect it and allow for clogging and backups and you, you alone, not mother nature, are the root cause of potential rotting fascia and rafter boards, uh, water running down walls and behind windows and getting into drywall. Like you, you can just imagine. And that's all because you had a great gutter system, but you just never took care of it. It's kind of like buying a nice new car to get to work. You know, and wow, that was sure a nice new car. But when it needed an oil change, you just let it go. That kind of treatment to a gutter system, just like a new car, it just won't last very long. Plain and simple. Let that gutter system fill with leaves, dirt, debris, and God knows what else. Clog the downspouts and bam, you have probably a worse problem than if you didn't have any gutters at all. Now from the roof, we go downwards and we reach the ground level. If correct slope is not created, all the efforts up top are ruined with water accumulation around the foundation. Unless, unless we correctly manage the water from the ground onward. The best scenario is doing a drainage system which will evacuate water either by gravity or mechanical means. This will call for water capture and transport using an underground plumbing system, catch basins, clean out ports, terminal points, and yes, periodic maintenance. Can it be done under a DIY auspices? Absolutely, absolutely freaking lutely it can. A little thought to planning and layout, some rental equipment and parts and pieces, and perseverance is all you really need. The biggest hurdle is slope for a gravity system or a system that terminates at a mechanical pump. In evaluating your landscape, and with you there day in and day out, month in and month out, you know the subtle low spots, where water goes when it rains or when the snow melts, where it accumulates. More importantly, you should learn the slope of your yard. I go over this in great length in the ebook and my digital course in a simple DIY string method to determine what kind of slope you have. Underground systems demand slope of at least an eighth inch per foot of pipe run. An eighth inch per foot of pipe run at a bare minimum. This will get water to move where you want it to go. Notice I did not say as an ideal slope. If you can get more slope, then the less you have to rely on the hydraulic pressure of water that's coming down off the downspouts and rushing into the system itself slope will take care of that and not rely on the hydraulic pressures. In many areas, slope is really hard to come by. When I practiced in the Central Valley of Northern California, some yards had lower backyards than front yards or absolutely level yards that were very, very hard to achieve any functioning slope. I can remember finding developer drainage systems that were put in. And it was funny because I would get there in the early spring, there was lots of water accumulation and those pipes were brimmed full with water, but nothing had ever come out. The installers had just thrown them in there because that's what was supposed to be there, connected them up to downspouts, had a couple catch basins in the backyard and called it good. But did they work? No, they did not because they did not have the grade or slope to achieve flowing water. I will tell you about super level yards or negative sloped yards in just a few minutes. But if you do have slope and it is easy to achieve, it makes your DIY system install a lot easier and allows for some fudge factors here and there. Let's start a little bit at the origin. We'll be starting at the eaves of the house or better case, 
as mentioned earlier, at the downspouts of your new gutter system. We determine slope from here and all other connected downspouts to a terminal point where the unwanted water can be evacuated off the property or in a safe place for later percolation back into the ground. Which percolation back into the ground in itself is dependent on what type of soil you sit on. Some just don't perk. Trenching is key here. Trenching to make sure your pipe plumbing is placed and sloped so water flows and your system is a success. You know, your trenches are gonna vary in width based on the size of pipe you plan on using. Most residential drain lines, the more common ones, your standard residential yard will be able to accommodate a three inch size corrugated or PVC pipe. Some are four inch and they kind of max out around six inch in more commercial applications. So trenches usually are four inches wide for a three inch pipe, which your standard rental trencher will generally achieve fairly easily. Six inches wide for a four inch pipe and so on. Trenches are cut, depth is checked, trenches are clean because you don't want to put your pipe on softened soil. You want it on a hard surface in the trench and slope is attained. Shallowest part of the trench is going to be at your origin of the system and the deepest part at the termination. Along the way, you may have other pipes join in to the like main line of your drainage system. If you can, I suggest you remember and try to achieve a connection into the main line at a 45 degree angle. Why? If you put a T on it, it will still work. But in heavy downpours, you tend to kind of kill the, the force and flow of the water when water coming into a T at a 90 degrees and the main line is trying to flow to the termination point. It just kind of kills the momentum where if you have it coming into the main line at a 45 degree angle, it actually kind of increases the flow or adds to it. And in your parts and pieces, check out this, this week's YouTube video because you'll see the parts and pieces I'm talking about. This calls for trenches that meet that main line. You have to trench accordingly. You can't put a, a 45 degree coupling into a main drain line at a 90 degree angle. It just doesn't work very well. But if you consider trenching maybe your origin is a, a back downspout in the backyard and you're bringing it down the side yard and you have another downspout that you're going to connect in out near the, the gate area. Well, remember to trench at a 45 degree angle to your main line and then clean it out. And then that 45 degree coupling fits in there very well and adds to the system rather than kind of slowing it down. Remember this, when you're putting your parts and pieces together with your main piping, you know, like using the couplings and T's and 45's and catch basins and whatever else you plan on using, they should be secured with a heavy duty plumbing tape. Now I used to use heavy duty Gorilla Tape and I would put it on only on dry pipe. I would not put it on a wet pipe. And if it was raining or the pipe was wet, I'd take a towel and dry it off thoroughly, then put my Gorilla Tape on there. It worked really well for corrugated pipe. Don't try to use expandable foam and don't try to glue those joints together in a corrugated pipe. It just does not work very well at all. But if you're using a uh, perforated or a solid uh, three inch, four inch, six inch PVC drain lines, yeah, then you can glue those together really well and you have a great watertight joint that is not going to leak. So to kind of keep this episode at a reasonable length, let's jump into the solution for yards with no slope or have too much slope which heads towards the home and you need to correct that problem because every winter that hillside, much like my very first house and even a little bit at Weed Patch Ranch, yeah, all of a sudden you've got water coming from the neighbors in the back coming down into your property and now what do you do? This is where French drains enter into the equation. French drains capture surface and some subsurface water that exists in the yard that need to be diverted away and around your home or a building and away from important yard areas like your outdoor living area, etc. This form of drainage 
essentially creates a moat. It captures unwanted water and delivers it to the main system or to another collection or evacuation point. French drains are created with trenches, just like the main house drainage system, but you add a couple of elements, like a sediment sock, which keeps dirt and other debris from clogging up a perforated line. The perforated line captures the water and then delivers it away. So a sediment sock keeps dirt and other things out. Small gravel around it. And then once again, since it's a gravity fed system, slope. You need slope. Oftentimes slope across a slope, which I explain more in this week's video. This is my first experience with drainage systems of my own back way back in 1982. My first home, my backyard was very sloped and it had been kind of terraced in order to make it a, a livable hillside. Every winter, water would find its way to my back foundation wall, thanks to gopher tunnels that I later discovered. And then it would flow down the foundation wall and into weep holes, dumping water literally like a creek into my garage. What a mess that was. Well, I learned how to install a French drain system really early on. I remember buying the house probably in mm, the fall. And then big rain event came in about, I don't know, February. And I came home once and the garage door opened up and there was water all in the garage and running out from underneath the garage doors. I'll tell you what, this French drain system eliminated, and I mean eliminated 100% of all the weeping water that got down into my garage. It was redirected in a really big way. Now, this yard was really sloped, so the origin of my French drain was fairly deep. The origin was probably 12 to 14 inches deep which is a little more than you level flatlander type yards. And then it got deeper as it went around the corner. But I had slope. I mean, you can picture a yard that was probably built on a slope of 15 to 18 degrees. Yeah, steep driveways, steep hillside, etc. When that termination point of that French drain went into action the following winter, oh my God, the water that came gushing, gushing, out of that French drain system made me feel a lot better and sleep a lot better. You know, in this week's video, I diagram the components of a French drain and how you kind of need to put it together so it lasts. And lasting is key. If you have a sense of laziness when it comes to French drain systems, you might as well just throw your money down the toilet and flush. You have to do it right, and you have to do it right the first time. So finally, for you very flatlanders or those of you who have negative slope, like I have seen many yards where the front yard is up high, the backyard is down low, and you can't really evacuate water to the neighbor to the side or behind you. That is if you have a conscience at all. So you need to get the water where it needs to go. And that's where we enter into mechanical evacuation of water. These sump pumps and sump basins, as they're called, are absolute lifesavers. These lifesavers will push the unwanted water to a safe evacuation point, a courteous evacuation point, and allow water to go where it's supposed to. The basins, the basins themselves, can be main collection points for a whole yard or a portion of the yard. Depends. Where you just cannot achieve water flow through slope or grade, especially negative. Collecting water at the basin and then using a mechanical sump pump in conjunction with check valves will push the water mechanically where you need it to go. Now, I tell you what, this saved our bacon quite a bit at Wheat Patch Ranch. At that particular location, we had kind of a uh, gradual neighborhood slope that kind of cut across our backyard and orchard area. And during one of our first rain events that we had within 30 days of being at the house, yeah, I share that story in the book a little bit. But I learned early on in ownership, I was going to need to do a good drainage system and a sump pump that was going to get rid of the water. By recognizing a potential drainage problem, identifying the solution, planning a system and executing an installation, 
you too can mitigate and almost eliminate any and all water threats that may be present in your yard. But you know something, guys? It takes action. You can listen to me all you want. You can watch YouTube and learn all the things you need to do. Execution and getting out there and doing it, using your own power or using your own checkbook and hiring it out. Either way, it allows you to sleep better at night knowing that you have installed a layer of household defense against that onslaught of damaging and just sitting unwanted water outside. I really appreciate you sticking around. I go into much, much deeper, deeper dive into this in the book and the, and the course. And feel free to check it out on the website, youryardcoach.com. Any questions that you might have about a drainage system or landscape use and care in general, I'm only an email away. Right now, as I make this in the very first part of January 2023, I wish California, especially my old neighborhoods of Northern California, good luck as they're entering into an atmospheric river that is sending everything to flood stage. I'll let you guys know, I've been there and I have done that. I know what you guys are going through. For those of you in the Southeast right now, heavy rains. Heavy rains yesterday and today might leave you thinking about a project later this year as well. Is it expensive? There's a tornado warning. <laughs> is it expensive? Well, not as expensive as dry rot or mold remediation and reconstruction. If you make it a part of landscape makeover, it is absorbed in the cost of the project itself. If it is a DIY job, the savings is even greater, of course. I will say bye for now and see you next week. Don't forget this week's episode on YouTube where pictures are worth a thousand words, and I'll be doing some diagramming to kind of show you everything we have talked about here today. Hey, I'll catch you guys later. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Yard Coach Podcast. Don't forget to head over to the website at youryardcoach.com where you will find more DIY landscape education, including the free 15-step DIY landscape checklist, Coach Matt's ebook called Landscaping Simplified, and the flagship digital course, Homescape 1.0. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can email Coach Matt directly at youryardcoach at gmail.com. We'll see you right here next week.